Hello and welcome to the section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Uh, here we're going to learn how to convert coordinate systems and so we're going to start off by talking about how to convert between rectangular and polar coordinates. So if you remember a rectangular coordinate is just a fancy word that means x comma y. So this is what you've been dealing with in algebra uh, from day one, x comma y. This is the x coordinate on the coordinate plane and then the y coordinate up there. Polar coordinate is uh, also two numbers to represent the point you're talking about, but instead of x comma y, you deal with what we call r comma theta. So r is the distance from the origin uh, to your point, and uh, theta is the angle. So for instance, if we had a point over here, it would be x would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and y would be, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4 coming up like this, so the point would be 4, comma 4. That would be uh, what we call a rectangular, right? Because it's you go across a rectangular grid like this. But we can represent the same point in polar notation by noting the distance between this point and the origin. So this kind of slanted distance, instead of going over and up, we just look at the slanted distance to our point. But in order to place the point, we also have to know the angle between that, that, that radius r that we draw and the x-axis. So it's still two numbers, but instead of x comma y, it's r, which is sort of the radius or the length from the origin to the point, and then the angle theta. So in your algebra classes, in your, in your pre-cal classes, you learn how to convert those coordinates by hand. It involves a little bit of trigonometry, uh, but the calculator can handle all of that for you. So let's go ahead and go back out uh, here. And let's go back to the command line so that we can sort of start fresh. Now the thing to realize is the way that you put coordinates and kind of input coordinates into this calculator is by these brackets here. So when you open a bracket and put some numbers inside, these blue brackets here, uh, basically what you are doing is telling the computer uh, to, to treat those guys as coordinates. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and put a blue bracket up there. And inside here, let's, go, let's pick the point 3, 4. So you, you put it in exactly as you would think, 3, 4. And then you close those brackets off. All right, so this is what a point, and it's sort of like x, y looks like. Now in algebra, normally you put parentheses around here, uh, but the calculator reserves the parentheses uh, right here for, for use in terms of algebraic expression. So just got to get in the habit of thinking about wrapping these coordinates in brackets. So if you just hit enter right now, all it's going to do is take that input and spit it back out at you because you've actually you've not told it to do anything with that. So it just sort of takes it and puts it back out there. Now, when you input the number, you have to put a comma. But when the calculator takes it and operates on it, it does not put a comma back in, in, the, in the sort of like what it reflects back to you. So if you see bracket and then number number, it's, it's still x comma y. It's just the calculator doesn't put the comma there for you but you must put the comma there. If you forget to put the comma there, there when you input the numbers, it's not gonna do anything. So let's say we wanted to convert three comma four to a, a polar representation. Now remember, we talked about the fact that it was a radius from the origin and it was an angle. So the angle that the calculator is gonna give you back in your polar representation, it's going to be dependent on the mode of your calculator. So right now we are in radian mode. Right, So if we convert this guy to polar notation, we're going to get an r and a theta, but that theta is going to be in radians. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and clear this. Do it again. Just open a bracket. Let's uh, change it to 3, 5 just so we have something uh, different there. Let's do 3, 5. And let's close the bracket off. Now, in order to actually do the conversion, we have to go into the math menu. All of the vector and... Uh, you know, and coordinate conversion things live in the math menu. So go to second function math. So we've input this, but we have not hit enter yet. We go into the math menu. There's all kinds of things in here we've been using uh, up until now. Now, actually, this conversion business lives in the matrix menu, and you'll understand why as you start to study matrices. Now, what you'll find in this menu under the matrix menu is a bunch of operations that we're going to get into later that deal with matrices. Uh, which are the square brackets with lots and lots of numbers in there. Of course, these are these are encased in brackets with with just the two numbers because it's a simpler it's a simpler way of dealing with coordinates like that. So to change coordinates, we need to scroll way down past all of these matrix operations until we get down to vector ops, vector operations. And when you fly this little menu out here, you will see uh, these guys number four through 
uh, basically number four and five for the section from what we're doing here. So this little arrow means convert to polar. The, the little arrow means let's change it to polar notation. So right now uh, over here underneath all these menus we have th uh, a, a coordinate uh, x comma y we would convert to polar. Later on when we have a polar value we want to convert to rectangular we'll use number five. Number six and number seven are used uh, in the next section when we talk about spherical and cylindrical coordinate systems. So right now let's go down and let's change it to polar. So we select number four and hit enter. Notice what we have input on the stack. That whole menu business was just to drill down to get to the point where we can select a little operation to convert this coordinate, three comma five, x comma y, into polar notation, r comma theta. And it's gonna return an angle that's in radians because we're in radian mode. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see that it returns a giant mess. What you have here is the calculator trying to keep everything exact. It's using the formulas to do this conversion, but it's keeping everything in, in terms of like an inverse tangent and pi everywhere uh, because it's trying to keep everything exact. What you should do is hit green and then squiggly equals to convert that last answer to, to some real some numbers, basically to evaluate the math. So what it's telling you is three comma five, which is x comma y, is equivalent to a radius from the origin of 5.83095 at an angle, that's what this symbol means, at an angle of 1.03038 radians. It's returning everything in radians because we're in radian mode. All right, now let's go and do exactly the same operation, but let's put ourselves in uh, degrees. So let's go and put ourselves in degrees just to see. So go to the mode menu. You can see we're in radians, so let's go down to radians. Let's fly this menu out and select degrees. So we've selected degrees, let's hit enter to save that. Notice that the calculator changes to degree mode. Now I still have the same point height, the same uh, calculation input on the, uh, on the stack because it was the last thing that I, I went ahead and evaluated. So let's go and evaluate it again. This time, because we're in degree mode, it's gonna return degrees. Now again, it tries to keep everything exact. So if you ever see anything like this, just convert it to a number and you will see that it's 5.83095 at an angle of 59 basically degrees, some change after that, 59.0362. Notice that when we converted it, and when we were in radian mode, we got a radius 5.83 and some change. In degree mode, we get the same radius because no matter if you're in degrees or radians, the distance from the origin of that point is going to be the same. So this number will never change no matter if you're in degrees or radian mode. But this guy, we got 1.03 radians. This guy, we got 59 degrees. Basically, these two angles are equivalent to one another. This is in radians, this is in degrees. Okay, so that is basically the idea. The first step is you have to input your, uh, your, your uh, coordinate point, and then you select the conversion in the math menu and you just hit enter. So let's do it one more time just to make sure you understand. So we'll go bracket, let's do uh, negative two, comma uh, four. So let's close those brackets off. So this is a, a rectangular coordinate. So negative two off to the left, up positive four. So let's go ahead and select a conversion. We'll go into the math menu. We have to go to the matrix menu, that's number four. And then we can scroll all the way down, but it's a little easier to go up and go from the bottom to vector operations, fly that out, and then we'll go and select to convert to polar notation. All right. So we'll go ahead and do this. So negative two comma four in polar, and then we're in degrees. So the angle that it comes back with should be degrees. We get an exact answer. Let's convert it to approximate. And what we get is 4.47214. That's the radius of the, of the guy from the origin at an angle of 116.565 degrees from the X axis. That's what this is measured in reference to. So it's doing exactly what you would do by hand. Now I want to do a few more examples. We're, at this point, we've been converting from rectangular to polar notation. I want to show you how to go from polar and go the other way. If you input polar and you want to convert back to rectangular notation. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, clear everything out of here. Clear, go up to the stack here and clear everything off. We're still in degree mode, all right? So let's go ahead and put something like, uh, notice we're in degrees. So let's, let's say we have, when we enter this guy, we need to enter a radius r and an angle theta, right? So let's go and say our radius is four. 
but we can't just put it in like that. We have to put it in brackets. It's still a coordinate, even if it's polar. So we put four, we have to put a comma. Now you have to tell it the angle. The way you tell the calculator that you're inputting an angle is by this little angle symbol down here. It looks like it's from geometry. So hit second function, this key down here, and you'll see the angle pop up there. Let's put 45. The calculator, since we're in degree mode, is going to assume that you have 45 degrees here. If we were in radian mode, it would assume that you meant 45 radians. So it all depends on the mode of the calculator you're in. If you get weird answers that don't make sense, make sure that you're in the proper degree mode. So this is a radius of 4 at an angle of 45 degrees. So if you were to think about an xy plane here, 45 degrees above the x-axis is something like this. You would be a distance of 4 units out, and that would be your point. So now we have to select the little conversion to turn that back into rectangular. So let's go second function math menu, go into the matrix menu, that's number 4, go up to vector operations, and we'll fly this out uh, to we want to convert. We don't want to convert to polar because we're already in polar. We want to convert to rectangular. So we'll hit enter and that will go down there. Now briefly before we go on, I just want to, to say that what we're doing here is converting coordinates. So a lot of you guys might wonder, well why are we in the vector menu if we're just converting coordinates? Uh, when you study vectors, which you'll do eventually in math, you'll learn that the difference between a vector and a coordinate point really isn't that different. So when you later on start dealing with vectors and converting vectors and the way in which you measure vectors, it's exactly the same math as converting these coordinates. So that's why it lives under the vector ops menu. So if you, if you have never heard of a vector before and that really confuses you, just sort, of, just sort of don't worry about it too much now. Just trust me a little bit later on when you study vectors and start convert, converting and representing vectors in different um, coordinate systems, you'll find that the math is exactly what we're doing here. It's really no different at all. And that's why we, that's why it lives under here. So let's go ahead and select that we're going to convert to rectangular mode. All right, so this is a, a distance of four units from the origin at an angle of 45 degrees, and we want to convert that to rectangular notation. So we'll hit enter, and we get a, some stuff with radicals. That's because it's trying to convert everything exactly for us. Hit squiggly equals, and then we'll get a number. Now notice what we got, 2.82 and some change, comma, 2.82 and some change. So the x is this and the y is the same value. That makes perfect sense because if you think about it, let's go look at a kind of a blank graph here. If we're four units away from the origin out along an angle of 45 degrees, somewhere around here, let's say, then x and y, if you were to look at the xy representation, it's going to be the same value of x as it is for y because we're along an angle of 45 degrees. All right, so that actually makes, makes sense. So let's go do another one that will hopefully make even more sense to you. Let's go and change this. Let me go and clear that. Let me open up this bracket. Let's say we're going to do zero. Uh, actually, let's do uh, uh, two comma, uh, and we want to do an angle, because I'm going to do polar notation, angle of 90 degrees. So I'm in degree mode. Right, so this 90 is going to be in degrees, and I'm two distance, away, two units away from the origin. So if you can visualize an xy graph, what I'm saying is I'm at an angle of 90 degrees, which is straight up on the y-axis. It's 90 degrees from x, and I'm two units up. So let's go and do that conversion. Let's go in the math menu. Let's go to number four for matrix. Let's go up to vector operations, and let's flip it down to convert that to a rectangular system. Hit enter. The answer we get is 0, 2. And that makes sense because if you think about polar and rectangular, 0, 2, let's go and look at a quick uh, graph. Uh, 0, 2 would be 2 units up on the y axis here, which is exactly the same thing as saying 2 units away from the origin and an angle of 90 degrees, which is what I had input in the first place. So I wanted to just pick an example that was easy for you to visualize that it's converting, it's basically the same point represented two different ways. All right. So let's go ahead and get out of that. There's one more thing I want to show you about this conversion. Um, you already know what it is, but um, I just want to, to go ahead and show you. Let's say you're in degree mode. Let me go ahead and clear all this stuff out. Let's say you're in degree mode like we are now, but you would like to convert something that's represented in radians uh, into rectangular coordinates. Now, you could go into the mode menu. You could select this guy to radians, and then when you do that, 
This will change to radians, and then whatever you enter into your coordinate point, you have to make sure it's in radians, you convert it to rectangular. But let's say you don't want to change the mode of your calculator. Let's say you want to keep it in degrees because you're mostly working in degrees, but this one conversion, you have an angle in radians. So you can basically override this degree temporarily. So go down here. Let's say we have, um, you know, uh, 6, comma, at an angle of. Now, instead of... Uh, let's say instead of uh, uh, 10 degrees, you know, I want to put, actually let's say instead of 45 degrees, let's say I want to do pi over 4 radians. Remember pi over 4 radians is the same as 45 degrees. So the way you could do that is you put any number you want here, but since we do, in radians we deal a lot with pi, open up a parenthesis, enter pi over 4 and close this parenthesis off. Now if I were to actually close this bracket here and convert this, it, it would still treat this number behind the angle as a degree, so it would not do what I'm intending to do. I need to override the degree function and tell the calculator that this is really radians. The way you do that is you go back into the math menu. You can do this a number of ways, but here's the angle menu. So we go to angle. Notice there are these things up here. Here's a degree symbol and here's a radian symbol. So if I want to override the degree mode of the calculator and force it to use this guy's radians, then I can do it like this. And this tells the calculator this is a distance of 6 at an angle of pi over 4 radians. The reason we needed to put the R was because we we're actually in degree mode. We're overriding it. So let's go into the math menu. Uh, let's go into vectors, uh, or matrix I should say. Go to vector ops and convert this to rectangular. So this is a polar representation in radians going to rectangular system. It does the math. Of course, I can convert that to decimal, and there I go. And it, it, it spits back at me what I input, 6 at an angle of pi over 4 radians, and so on. And it doesn't have to be in terms of pi. I can, I can put any number I want here. I can put 4 radians, right, and get, a, get, get an answer back. But if I'm going to be dealing with pi, it's very important to wrap this pi business inside of some parentheses in here, pi over 2. And that's going to make it clear that the whole thing, pi over 2, is in radians. And then you get an answer here. Okay? So we have converted, we have learned how to convert rectangular to polar coordinates. And we've learned how to convert um, uh, polar back to uh, rectangular coordinates. Now let's go ahead and clear everything out. I'm going to show you one more thing before we close this lesson out. Let's change the mode of the calculator back to radians. Most of the time you're going to be dealing in radians. So here we go. Now let's go ahead and input one more just to learn about it. We'll say, uh, you know, 8, comma, and we have an angle. You know, let's say uh, 2. Now when we do this, if we convert this, it's going to assume that I mean 2 radians because I'm in 2 radians, right? I'm in radian mode. So I go to the math menu. I go to the matrix part. Fly up to vector ops. Select convert to rectangular coordinates. And I'm going to have a distance of 8 units away at an angle of 2 radians converting to a rectangular system. I've got some sines and cosines running around because that's how the conversion works, but to, to actually make it into a decimal, to go squiggly equals, and then I'm negative 3.3 and some change, comma, y is equal to 7.27 and some change. All right, now that makes sense. Now, much like just a minute ago when we were in degrees and we were overriding the mode with the little radian symbol, you can also override this guy and force it to use degrees here, even though you're in radian mode. To do that, you go back to the math menu, you go to the angle menu, you see this little degree symbol here. So you hit this guy, and this is going to tell the calculator, okay, I'm a distance of 8 units away, 2 degrees, not 2 radians. Don't, don't look at the mode of the calculator. It's telling it to override it and say this is 2 degrees. Let's convert that to rectangular. We go ahead and hit enter, convert that to a decimal, and you can see that these numbers for x and y are quite different than the ones we got above. Because in the above, we were dealing with radians. That's a totally different angle than if you have 2 degrees. So the answers you get should be, um, should be different. So that about wraps it up for this section. It's, it's actually pretty easy. The only thing you have to remember is that, that the coordinates that you type in need to be inside of these brackets. They need to be separated by a comma. If you're just going to put x and y in, you just put number, comma, number, and then you go into that math menu, matrix menu, and select the conversion to polar coordinates, and it's going to spit back an angle and a, and a distance depending on the mode of the calculator you're in. If you already have a polar number that you want to go to rectangular with, you also have to type it in separated by a comma, but you have to put this angle symbol in, and it's going to assume that the angle you type in is the same mode as what you have in your calculator. 
You can override that mode temporarily if you'd like just for that one calculation by inserting the, the degree or the radian symbol that we talked about. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. Play around with it. Uh, make sure you understand it because this is actually one of those things that you'll use quite a bit all throughout uh, trig, calculus, physics, and just tons of courses beyond.